So that, it's going to be wonderful. I'm going to invite Janice to come up. Janice is one of our, uh, well, she, she actually uh, was useful to her husband who has very long arms and reached over and grabbed a $50 bill and then handed it to Janice. Janice, how did you feel about being handed a $50 bill? good until I found out I couldn't keep it. <laughs> <laughs> no. So uh, I'm, I'm told that, uh, that, that you got a $50 bill, so what, what happened? Well, I, I carried it in my pocket for a couple days, hoping to find someone who was down to their last can of soup where their electricity was going off and they needed it, but I didn't find anyone like that. So um, I had to look around for some things. Um, my grandson, John, goes to Helmers Elementary, and they were doing a 30, 30 years Santa Clarita birthday, and they were going to give to 30 charities in the valley. So the day we decided to participate, they wanted paper goods. So we bought paper plates, napkins, cleaning supplies, and he brought those to school to donate for, for that project. And I had a little bit extra, and I know this lady who, she's older, she doesn't have a lot of, a lot of um, resources, and she has a lot of dietary problems, but she loves the Insure. So I bought her a case of chocolate Insure, and she was so thankful for that. And I told her it was from our church and what we were doing. And she said, thank you. And um, we are in her prayers always, as, as I'm always in her prayers. And I said we'd be praying for her. And also, I went out and bought some socks and blankets. Um, our local food pantry does service some homeless people, and I had my socks and my blankets there, and I was able to give them out to several homeless gentlemen and ladies, and they were very appreciative of that, too. You see, the, it's, it may be hard to begin with. You may think that this $50 was, was for somebody who's completely down and out. Thank you, Janice. Uh, but it turns out that there are individuals who are functioning maybe at a different level to what, uh, what I'm functioning at, and it, just a little help in some way uh, at the right time can be the difference. Uh, a can of Insure. Uh, this is a, a, a drink that's come up that has helped many, many people. And as I'm talking, I'm asking Jill to come forward. Jill, uh, Dr. Jill, if, you would, if you'd make your way forward. Uh, uh, I, I just want you to know that, that it's, it's not difficult once this ball gets rolling. Um, what I'm suggesting, you heard Janice went and and got uh, some paper goods. I bet, Janice, that that was to be given to Bridge to Home. I'm not sure. There's okay. 30 charities in the valley that they were going to How many of the rest of us are aware of the fact that there was this push to support 30 different charities here in Santa Clarita? Was anyone else aware of that? No. Okay. I'm going to say that it would be a good thing for us as helping people or people motivated by the Holy Spirit transformed just like popcorn that we would become aware that we would become aware of the agencies that already exist in our valley that are helping people Janice is our connection to the food bank if you want to know anything more about the food bank that's right here in Newhall please ask Janice and obviously she used some of your fifty dollars to help with the food bank okay uh, the thing about socks, just as a funny, funny little sidelight, uh, people who are homeless don't wash their clothes. That's something that costs money and time. And so the thing that happens often is that they will just change their clothes from what they have been wearing to what they can get a hold of. Okay? If you see clothes by the side of the road or beside a trash can, that is probably what has happened. Therefore, you can imagine that what needs to be changed most regularly and most, most often is underwear and socks. If you put in your basket once a month a six-pack of socks or a three-pack of underwear and give it to Janice, it can become part of who you are and part of your monthly budget, and I guarantee you, you will not miss that ten dollars or that five dollars that it takes to do that so if we get in the habit of being connected to the agencies that are helping those in need then I believe our Heavenly Father will do what Brett said and that our left hand will not know what our right hand is doing 
but the blessings of heaven will be falling upon those around us because God has blessed us. Jill, uh, you, you jumped up as well and you grabbed hold of a $50 bill. What happened? Well, um, I was at a chapel church reunion. I didn't jump up. I didn't grab hold of a $50 bill. Oh, that's right. But She's one of the ones that came and said, oh, I wish I had. Well, and I said, could you use your own $50? And you did, didn't you? Right. Well, some of us remember Pathfinders did this several years ago, but it was nine or ten years ago. Do you remember Brennan Honus selling pesto? Did any of you buy pesto that Brennan made? Yeah, mm -hmm. we did. Okay. It was great. And Annika made chocolate chip cookies. They were supposed to grow the $50. It wasn't near an Oshkosh. Okay. So we had some money, and now all the Pathfinders got a $50 bill. Okay. This time, I didn't have time to do that. I gave the $50 to the Wycliffe Bible Translators. And okay. the ones that. Who knows, who knows who the Wycliffe Bible Translators are? I now know more. Okay. But Tell it's us. all those secondary languages that the Bible is not yet in. The people, the tribe that lives way out in the hills okay. and getting the word of God in their own language. It's a special organization. It's non-denominational and it's, its idea is, I have, and they want to translate the word of God into every language in the world. Okay, Those of you who are from the Philippines, you know, we don't usually know, but I happen to know that not everybody in the Philippines speaks the same language for example. And so the question is, is there a Bible in maybe one of the other dialects that's on just the, the Philippine island chain, for example? Uh, it's not all English, it's not all Spanish, it's not all Tagalog. Okay, so the Wycliffe Bible translators go around and they put the Bible into indigenous languages, which requires individuals to go out into these places to learn these languages and then do the translation from English into these languages. So you can imagine, it's a time-taking, time very, very specific kind of ministry that people do. And there are individuals who have said that they will do this and they are supported by this organization. So thank you very much. Your $50 went to help Wycliffe Bible Translators. Okay? Um, I'm gonna, down, down a little, would, would you come up? Okay, I, I mentioned, I mentioned the Philippines, and I saw him nodding his head, okay? Um, uh, last, two Sabbaths ago when we did this, I, I asked him specifically if he would, if he would participate. Yes. And so, Actually, what did, what I, did, I wrote my... You, my, may, you may read it, go it's right okay. ahead. It's okay. Uh, I'm not good with interview. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Good morning. Happy good morning. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Uh, Thanksgiving is about thanking God for all the bountiful blessings we have received every day through the rest of the year, as well as remembering that He is God who has enabled us to work with our hands, being good health as we always remember, that He's the one who gives us the power to get well, according to His word. I'm not yet a seven-day Adventist, but when my niece, Rachel, invited me to attend seven-day Adventist for almost two years now, since that time I, will, I can say that God has blessed me in all areas of my life, and I'm honored to be part of this church. Amen. There are many things to, for me to thank for, first and foremost to God and people use of God in my life. Today I stand here in front of you. I've taken the bold step and challenged to help somebody. If it's not for Pastor Mike Stevenson, I will not be challenged to bless <laughs> somebody and share these blessings to them. Thank you for supporting this act of kindness through the seed of money, which of course the $50 bill that you may they have gave me to start to, good, to do good things to as many as people as I can. It is very rare and seldom that we have that opportunity to help others. Doing good deeds is a mark of a Christian, and this is the reason we are called to share blessing to others, as he has blessed us in our life. Last two weeks, I was given a chance to apply the acts of kindness in doing good things into two separate occasions. First was my employer, Steve, together with another friend, James. I take them for lunch at Hot Hamburger Place in Simi Valley. And they were so thankful and happy that I brought lunch for them. And I told them I was paying back kindness to kindness. But before that, Steve, in one instance, while I'm working with him a month ago, I'm, and helping him, he told me that he wanted to attend Seventh-day Adventists in Simi Valley one of these days. And I told him he's most welcome to visit one of a church in their area. Secondly, Last Thanksgiving, November 23, I visited my niece, Rachel, and her lady patient in their apartment and personally delivered their turkey dinner and flowers. 
They were both astonished and thankful for the gesture, thanking me as I bid goodbye to them. Lastly, even if you will not speak or preach the word of God, your actions speak louder than your voice. In our everyday life, we can say all adjectives and words of praise to people we know, but the bottom line is that our, our acts of kindness that we have done to them will continue to echo in their lives as long as they live. Let us not be wary in doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we paint not. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. God is good indeed. Amen. All the time. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't know about you, but it sounds like he had fun. <laughs> and and, and I, I don't know about you, but living the Christian life in this, fa in this fashion is amazing fun. And, uh, uh, you know, if... if, if Again, if, if you would like to see something like this happen for yourself, um, we can supply some funds. There, there are funds that are available to me and to others in the church. But I, I would suggest that uh, there's probably something in your budget once in a while that you could do something along these same lines. Uh, so if this is what has served to prime the pump, so to speak, then let the Spirit lead. Uh, our scripture reading today is for all of us to do. Um, do we have it on the... Okay, great. Um, if we could all stand, please, and as one, read the word of God. Oh, yes. You have heard it said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. I'm going to invite Sylvia to come up. I'm going to invite Pat and, uh, and Brett. You're, you're on deck. All right? I do believe that there is also a gentleman here with glasses. Uh, did you, the, the, I know this sounds like somebody being called out in the congregation, but I believe you also were identified, there was somebody else that was identified as having taken 50, but we didn't figure out a name. So if I have not called you up and you took a $50 bill and are ready to talk about it, I'd be happy to have you come forward at this time. There it is. I thought so. Sometimes, you know, the pastor sees a different congregation than the camera does. And the uh, camera sees you from the back of the head, but uh, uh, we, were, we were reviewing the tape, so to speak. Good to see you. Dan, Dan, thank you, Dan. Okay. Sylvia, uh, you came forward, and I, I thank you for doing that. What did you do with your $50? Well, I uh, spent most of the last two weeks waiting for the spirit to call. Um, I was praying about it, and I had... Uh, a little bit of some idea, but it didn't quite feel that that was what the Spirit was calling me to do. Um, I went looking for some people that uh, may or may not have needed it, and they said that they had uh, received other gifts in this holiday season from other friends and family, and to thank you, but to pass it along to someone else. And uh, I went around to my uh, grocery stores as I was doing my shopping and was uh, looking for those who uh, were maybe putting back uh, what they uh, didn't uh, quite consider necessities or uh, couldn't quite afford, and I found nothing. <laughs> and okay. So uh, as the two weeks went by, I felt a little bit more urgency of, oh boy, I need to do something. So uh, yesterday, I uh, went uh, to the nearest Walmart and said, I got to do something. And I bought uh, as many toys as I could afford as the uh, Black Friday sales, as cheapest as possible. Mm -hmm. 
and I uh, donated that to uh, Toys for Tots because I know people go looking to them for uh, Christmas presents and when they can't quite afford them. Fantastic. So your money, thank you very much, yes. Your $50 went to Toys for Tots. So it's gone to Adra so far, it's gone to Toys for Tots. Are you seeing a pattern here of spreading the love? Pat, what did you do? Well, I carried the $50 with me for two, three days, and uh, I didn't seem to come around anyone. I was looking for someone, mm -hmm. particularly, I don't know why, but I was looking for a woman. I went to a store and bought a card that I got inspired into putting a message into the card and put our, the name of our church and put the money, you know, um, a few days later, I was in a shopping center uh, checking a couple of stores. I came out and I saw a gentleman far like a half a block sitting down looking at his phone. And I said a prayer and I said, Lord, guide me if that is the correct person that needs to receive the blessing. I walked towards him and in no time we opened a conversation. Uh, this was more than I um, thought would happen, but um, he ended up uh, telling me a uh, little more about his life and what was going on and how he did not believe in God because there were so many bad people in the world. I had an opportunity to share and, you know, the, the gospel and my testimony. I shared. Uh, also parts of my life that were similar to his mm -hmm. and um, he had asked me uh, are you just shopping and I said I was looking for a person and we kept talking and he had a lot to say he's got problems at home he's got three teenagers and he doesn't have a steady uh, income so I thought something passed through my head and I said well I opened my purse, I pulled the card, and I said, this is for you. I said, but there's something in my car that I want to give you. I said, if you want me to pray for your family or your children, you know, give me the name of the kids. I went to my car, opened it, and got a magazine. It's a seven-day Adventist magazine. And the name of the uh, magazine is The Day of the Lord. And I came back, and he had already written the name of his kids on a piece of paper, even though he said he didn't believe in the Lord. So I'm very thankful for the opportunity of sharing, you know, my faith and, you know, being a testimony to someone. Fantastic. We, we never know. These, thank you. Yes, absolutely. As kids, we have always uh, enjoyed taking rocks and throwing them into very still ponds because you get to see the ripples. That's what we're hearing about this morning, and yet we are not able to know where the ripples will go. We don't know what will happen as a result of doing this particular action as a church family. Uh, could be that there will be something that comes back. Who knows? We'll see. Dan, right? Yeah. How are you doing? <clears throat> well, at first I was kind of embarrassed because my, my own experience, though similar, uh, well, I'll, I'll describe what, what happened. Uh, I asked God to direct me to somebody who might be in need. I know there's lots of people, and I don't have any idea which one this is going to benefit the most. Right. I do want to say, whoever came up with this idea, it's really inspiring. My I wife. Mean, Oh, it's <laughs> tremendous. I mean, seriously, uh, I, I think it has everybody's attention, too. You know, I mean, what do we do with this? Yeah. Anyway, I, I saw this. I, I drive Uber, so I ended up down on Long Beach. And I saw this guy sitting in the middle of the sidewalk. And I thought, uh, wow, if anybody looks like he's in need, this dude is. But... You know, I thought money, you know, he needs more than money, but maybe the money will just open his eyes. And that's about all he did when I handed him the money. 
He looked at me with astonishment, like, I don't know what other word to use. He just, I think, I think nobody had ever stopped to talk to him in a while. And he looked pretty, pretty messed up. And I, I kept talking to him to try to engage him in conversation, but all he could do was open his mouth and no words came out. Uh, and he looked like, what's this guy doing talking to me? Who's this stranger? And I never got a word out of it. But finally, after I held the $50 bill out to him for probably a minute, mm -hmm. and I said, this is for real. It's real, man. It's, there's no strings attached. No, you know, you don't have to do anything for it. It's a gift. And he just looked at me, and finally, he brought his hand up. It was like every little thing that he did took a lot of effort. And he just took his hand up and grabbed it. And, and I said, now put it in your pocket so it doesn't blow away. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just glad to be here and hear all these. All of you have given me ideas because it's something I do a little bit of every day, a couple of bucks here and there. Amen. But it's really inspiring. Amen. It's awesome. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. I, I need to do this because I wasn't able to remember, because we're going to do this again, if you don't mind, in a little while. And next time I'll have a secretary right beside me, and there'll be name, email number, <laughs> telephone number, email. So it'll be a little easier to remember who it was. But I, is there anyone else who took the, took the challenge, besides Brett, who took the challenge to do this with their own money? Okay, Jill, Jill was one, I know. And we do have one that did take $50 who needs a little more time. That's fine. We'll hear that story later. Okay. Uh, but if any, did any of the rest of you decide, well, I didn't get $50, but I'm going to do my own $50, or I'm going to do my own thing? Just, I, I mean, it doesn't have to be, fi who now? Kit. Kit? Okay, well, can we hear from you after Brett? Sure. All right. <laughs> Um, there is a, a lady in our community that does a lot for uh, special needs kids, and um, when he was holding up 50s, that's, it just triggered immediately. Uh, and I knew that um, Milton and I were going to have coffee with her, and um, I think Milt, because much like he helped Janice, he helped me, I was so giddy to give her the money that I didn't even tell her what it was about. And Milt was like, no, here's what's going on. You know? <laughs> um, so, Thank you, Milt. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> so when he told her what was going on, she immediately started crying. And she said, I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to do with this. Uh, I'll try to make this quick. Um, she lives a couple of blocks from a school, and the tree in her yard was bringing up the sidewalk. And... She was scared because kids are her life. She was scared that kids were going to trip over it. And so the city came out and, and cut down uh, the tree in her yard, uh, which left her yard less appealing. Um, and then with over the time of all the drought restrictions and the, I mean, the water restrictions with the drought and stuff, she had let her yard go. Um, so the city came by and was about to fine her. They were going to give her a period of time to, to fix up her yard. So she was telling her daughter, I think it was on that Sunday, um, so it would have been the day after that we got the money that, um, or maybe it was a week later, whatever, that she had to fix her yard. She had to go out and buy things, and she did not have the money, so she was just going to step out in faith. So um, she knew exactly where that money was going to go the minute it, 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 it was to replenish her account for spending money on something that she had no money to spend on. And um, she wanted us to tell you guys how grateful she was for it and to thank you very much. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Beautification. You, you helped to beautify a yard that was under suspicion by the city of Santa Clarita. Wow. Uh, I don't know if any of you have had that. Come on up, Kit. Uh, if any of you have had that experience of having the, uh, 
the city come by and say, your yard is so terrible that we're going to fine you, that, that must have been a lot of pressure. So thank you for helping to alleviate that. So Kit, what did you do on your I, own? I didn't actually succeed, but it, it, was, it was very cool. I was in Trader Joe's, mm -hmm. and two people ahead of me was a young lady, and she had three bouquets of flowers in her shopping cart. And she ran her credit card, and it was declined. And I went, oh, I can do that. So I waited. She came around and was behind me with her cart. And I went back, and I said, I can pay for those. And she, and she started to cry. And she hugged me, and she says, people don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and as it turned out, her mother was in the process of depositing money into her account. So that she didn't need me to pay for her flowers, but she thanked me profusely, and I got a, a really big hug. Amen. Amen. You know, um, there's, that, there's that song that goes like this. They will know we are Christians by our love. Didn't say they will know we are Christians by the 28 fundamental beliefs that the Seventh-day Adventist Church holds high. Those 28 fundamental beliefs, I believe, have been written in such a way to show us that there is a God of love who operates his kingdom on the basis of love and that when we cooperate, I love that word, cooperate, meaning it's not just me, it's me and, or it's God and. It's a cooperation. When we cooperate with God, that love is spread in ways that are very unexpected. Unexpected by the receiver. I thought Kit's story was particularly interesting when she told me because the fact is that there are numbers of people, Sylvia had the same experience, there are numbers of people who are so blown away by somebody offering them that they actually can, can take offense. Because they suddenly think, well, you think that I need this and do, do I look like I need this? That, that, that reaction has actually struck me very deeply because oftentimes I wonder whether we treat God that way with all the gifts that he gives us. God, you, re you, really, you really look at us like we're that needy? And then we're not thankful for what he has done for us when maybe he is super blessing us because he has told us that the abundant life will overflow into the lives around us. And all we can do is say, but my barns aren't big enough. So I'm going to go and build bigger barns. Remember what Jesus said about that guy? Your life may be required of you because you thought this was all for you. It's not all for you. It's you and I cooperating together to be a conduit for the blessings of God in humanity. So as we, as we head out this week, I don't know what your week's plans are. It's after Thanksgiving. Cyber Monday is coming up. Okay, I'm going to take advantage of that with a project I'm working on with some people in this church right now. And we're going to see what's on the internet to fulfill that project. You will have the opportunity to do what your fellow congregants went and did on behalf of all of us. And you can do this on behalf of the kingdom of heaven. You can love on people around you in ways that they may not have expected, but that the Holy Spirit will literally, like the popcorn, will take that idea that's been a seed in your mind and he will pop it into action. The question is, are you going to be ready? Are you going to be ready to just say, yes, Lord, and just go and do? I've told people this, I'll say it again. I don't teach gifts like other pastors. Because I believe that God has called us on a mission and that he will give us the gifts that we need in order to accomplish the mission that he sends us on. In other words, I'm not going to give you a gifts inventory so that you can write down, oh look, I've got the gift of hospitality, so therefore all I can do is hospitality. See how that's very limiting? Rather, let's say, be open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit this week, knowing that he will give you the right words to speak. He will give you the right actions to make. 
at that moment because you are cooperating with him and his kingdom will be glorified as a result. The joy that you saw on the faces of the people that have shared today, that's the joy that you can have this week. That's the joy we can have every week. And it doesn't have to be money. It, doesn't, it, it can be time. It can be just noticing. It can be whatever. I mean, some of us, we have little things that we always do. I always tell people that their tire is going flat. <laughs> okay, the one time I didn't, around the corner, the car was there and the tire was shredded. So when I see somebody with a flat tire, if I can, I tell them your tire is flat. You have a few more minutes before your tire will need to come off and be replaced, get to a gas station. Or if I can change it for them, I do. So that's a little thing that I've decided I can do to change the trajectory of someone's life. In this world today, in this valley, in this LA area, somebody with a tire that's going flat is about to be in a world of hurt. Very, very difficult stuff to be on the five and be on the shoulder and be changing a tire. Come on. It would be a whole lot better if you told them when they were in the parking lot of the grocery store. Okay? So this is the sort of thing that as we dare to enter into other people's lives, we have the opportunity to be Jesus to them in this world at this time. Not saying in the sweet by and by, but saying this is the sweet by and by. Because Jesus is in my life, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing eternal life. Amen? Okay, this, this is our eternal life. This meeting that you came to today, this is part of your eternal life. We will remember being together on this Thanksgiving Sabbath forever. Isn't that wonderful? It's never going to be forgotten. It's never going to be something that we will say, well, that was then, this is now. No, this is a continuous stream. Yes, some of us may experience the sleep of death before Jesus. Maybe all of us will experience the sleep of death before Jesus comes. But we are promised by Jesus Christ that it will just continue on into eternity. Whatever eternity looks like or feel like, we don't know. We don't care. Right now, we're in our eternity. Right now is when Jesus is ready to cooperate with us. So I, as you can tell, I get excited about that. And when we do these kinds of kingdom things with people in our community, God blesses. He doesn't just bless us, but he blesses everyone else as well. God bless you as you go out and do what he asks you to do this week. Amen.